Assalamualaikum students. So this is a brief video which is focusing on uh, some of the MCQs which were conducted in the recently held set of examinations. Uh, these MCQs are uh, were incorrectly uh, marked by uh, most of the students. So um, by most I mean more than 50% of the students uh, could not correctly identify the best answer. Uh, so I selected these and uh, we are presenting this uh, a detailed walkthrough of the key of, of these particular MCQs because we perceive that since most students didn't get this uh, uh, the, the difficulty index of this of these MCQs would be high uh, and to give you a, a, a general overview of how university exams are set uh, there's a mixture of questions uh, some are recall based easy questions uh, some are medium questions in difficulty and some are very hard questions. Okay. Um, some of these questions uh, were not very hard. Okay. Uh, but some were. So the last questions on circulation were hard. I personally picked them uh, and uh, made them such that uh, it really gives you a run for your money. So here is that analysis and I hope this helps you. Sure. Right. Oops. Okay, before we start, uh, this particular MCQ, which by the way, you all got a honorary mark for, uh, I beg your pardon, the ones who either selected A or B got, uh, got marks for it, uh, not C, D and E, which are obviously wrong answers. A and B are very close. Let me just tell you first something. The exams, these MCQs exams at the university level and beyond, i.e. FCPS, uh, MLEs, PLABs and whatnot, all these exams, the ones that employ MCQs, uh, you will always read a line, choose the best option. They literally mean that, choose the best. Best means that there are, there can be more than one better quote-unquote answers okay but really the best would be uh, a single one out of those closely uh, running better uh, uh, options okay this is a classical example of uh, that kind of difficult uh, mcq where there are two very likely answers but really the one that is the best is one so the question was a young person had was certainly uh, uh, periodically would be collapsing on physical distress uh, uh, labs uh, gave their potassium concentration uh, in the serum to be higher he was diagnosed with uh, this disorder let me just highlight these so serum concentration of potassium was higher he had a collapsing issue uh, this was the diagnosis okay which is a clinical condition we mentioned muscle weakness so uh, you need not uh, 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 worry about a lot about this because this is not a medicine exam this is uh, a physiology exam but it's good to know that there is a condition out there where which is related to potassium it's called periodic hyperkalemic hyperkalemic means more ecf potassium paralysis paralysis obviously you know is muscle weakness or muscle breakdown functional breakdown okay so which of the following is this is the key thing now the, the actual question which of the following is likely to cause muscle weakness okay as a result of increased ecf potassium concentration if you see uh, this this and this these are obviously wrong uh, answers okay um, you can go through this this is very simple however look at this let me just change the color look at these two this one and this one during depolarization you have sodium coming in okay and during repolarization you have potassium going out so positive ions are coming into the cell to excite it during depolarization with the de right and during repolarization when the when the action when the potential of the cell the voltage of the cell is coming back to the resting membrane potential uh, you have positive charges leaving the cell but the positive charge that leaves the cell and makes it more negative inside is potassium 
okay this is standard cell repolarization okay um, so if you hyperpolarize the cell if you pull in uh, too many uh, uh, positive charges inside for longer period of time there will obviously a problem there will be a problem of repolarization of the cell okay now check this out this guy has higher ecf potassium so outside the cell he has more potassium when during repolarization you will try to efflux or get rid of your potassium uh, validly rightly so uh, this will be a problem for this person because the gradient opposes it now in this person because the extracellular extracellular potassium is is on the higher side so uh, the the efflux of potassium will be inhibited which will trap the potassium inside the cell raising its potential hyperpolarizing it and this will cause all sorts of problems with action potential so this is actually a correct response however look at this one here the b okay b is inactivation of sodium channels in muscle cells okay now the trick here is this sustained hyperpolarization if it's not relieved in time what happens is the inactivation gate of sodium channels they get stuck okay and no matter what you do now uh, this is not going to function properly the sodium channel is now inactive and if the sodium channel is inactive this cell will not depolarize okay it's locked so while this is the atmosphere here hyperpolarization of the cell this is the atmosphere in which this happens in fact the precise the precise mechanism that causes this this uh, this this whole thing to stop is the sodium channels inactivation gate they they due to this abnormally high positivity they keep on being closed and not open for business and this is why the peral paralysis ensues and this this cell cannot uh, conduct proper action potentials this is a classical example uh, students of uh, two of the options being correct but really one was the uh, the best one all right so we started from this <clears throat> Okay, so this is uh, the second one. Uh, this was incorrectly marked by 67% uh, of the students. The question is, uh, there is a reduction of uh, arterial O2, partial pressure of oxygen. Okay, and which, of the, which one of the following uh, will have a reduction of uh, the arterial tension in the blood? Now, anemia is uh, not correct uh, because in anemia you have a problem with the RBC count or the hemoglobin amount. The problem is not uh, O2, O2 saturation or O2 tension. Carbon monoxide poisoning is incorrect also is because we know and I've taught this multiple times uh, that the problem is, is with bound hemoglobin bound oxygen not dissolved uh, oxygen and it's the dissolved oxygen which basically uh, uh, generates the PO2 as you, as you, as you know it. The partial pressure of oxygen uh, in moderate exercise again it's incorrect why is because uh, in exercise just strenuous exercise and that too at seriously strenuous levels does the po2 falls uh, below this uh, through through your through most of the spectrum of exercise the po2 is is uh, is maintained uh, by uh, many overarching mechanisms uh, and if you are looking at respiration only, the depth and rate of respiration is enhanced uh, such that and blood flow is enhanced by increasing cardiac output. So all this comes together uh, to give you a stable PO2. So this is incorrect. Cyanide poisoning is obviously incorrect. The problem is with the utilization of oxygen at the cellular level. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the oxygen pickup at lungs and, and distribution at the tissue. It's really the cells uh, uh, in the mitochondria uh, is where the problem lies, where cyanide ion goes and uncouples the oxidative phosphorylation, okay? So that leaves us with the correct answer, which is, oops, sorry, which is this. Okay, I'm still figuring out these, these extra uh, zoom options. Hypoventilation, this is clearly the best answer why because if you hypoventilate, you're not uh, bringing in enough oxygen 
that will lead to a reduction in arterial O2. Okay, so we go on to the next MCQ. It was, uh, it had an incorrect rate of 69%, which is really silly because it's a straightforward question. Uh, maybe you got thrown off by the not here. Uh, maybe we should avoid these kind of MCQs. Anyhow, so the question is, which of the following is not true about asthma? So uh, when, when such a thing comes in front of you, you know that four of these options uh, will be true about asthma. Only one will not be true. The basic defect is called chronic uh, inflammation. Uh, that is correct. Let me choose the appropriate. This is actually correct. It is a chronic inflammation. Uh, the airway smooth muscle is hyper responses. This is true. It can be treated by inhaled steroid therapy. True. It is treated by bronchodilator therapy. True. The only wrong option here is the one left, which is it is. Is it always caused by allergy? That is not correct. It can be caused by uh, many other things, by pollution, by certain chemicals, uh, so in some people with hyperactivity, in some people with cold, and so on and so forth. It has a plethora of causes. Uh, allergies is, is really one of the top causes, but it's not the only cause. Okay. Right. So this uh, particular MCQ uh, has a very high in, uh, inaccur inaccuracy rate. Seventy-two percent of the students got it wrong. Uh, the MCQ is as follows: the best and direct. These are the two keywords here. Best and direct measure of left ventricular preload. Now, preload. Uh, you know what preload is? Left ventricular preload. Preload is all the blood that uh, is accumulated inside the left ventricle during diastole. In another word, in, in other words, uh, the amount of blood that now the ventricle needs to contract to get the stroke volume out of this. Okay, so this is the preload, and we are, are have been given five choices. Okay, uh, out of which we need to select the best direct measure of this preload. Okay, so by the way, it's it's one. It's the this is the correct answer. Okay, it's it's really the Hold on. This is the correct answer. Okay. Uh, why? Is because left ventricular and diastolic volume is the right choice. Okay. This is this is the main thing. If you have the volume, you will have the pressure. If you don't have the volume, you will not have the pressure. And what was asked was direct. This was what was asked. The best direct measure is actually volume. Okay. The pressure is dependent on the volume. So B is not correct. B is not correct, sir. What about mean systemic filling pressure, MSFP? This is a determinant of uh, venous return. Uh, so both of these, both of these are related to venous return, which yes, eventually does determine uh, what happens inside the heart, but it's really removed away from the left ventricle. It's not a direct measure. It's basically a direct measure of venous return. Pulmonary wedge pressure is also incorrect because uh, it it is not directly related with uh, left ventricular filling. Okay, so this was a tricky one. Uh, most of you, uh, not surprisingly, uh, responded this one. Most of the responses came as option B. Okay, now again, the, the, uh, this is a encouraging trend in the sense that these two are really close. These are closely linked options. But if you if you had thought hard, uh, the volume determines the pressure. Okay, so that's that. Okay, this was this the next one is also very tricky. Uh, Sixty four percent of this question was incorrectly responded, uh, and this will take a, a, a bit of an explanation. Before you go into the nitty gritty of this, uh, first. What you should do in such MCQs is get some basic formulas scribbled down uh, on your on your sheet with a pencil, uh, so that you can solve it easily. In this scenario, you you were asked uh, mean arterial pressure changes. Now the question does not give increase or decrease, so this is tricky. It changes. It can mean increase or decrease. So what basically uh, the the questioner wants to know is if you know what effects mean arterial pressure what are the what are the determinants of mean arterial pressure 
and this question will be responded correctly by by students who really understand uh, those concepts and those interrelationships. Uh, this is the basic stuff here. Mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac output and total peripheral resistance, also referred to as SVR. So in this question, uh, he gives uh, systemic uh, vascular resistance, which is really the same thing as total peripheral resistance, okay, for, for, mat for matters related to this question. Okay, so cardiac output and TPR are the two determinants of uh, mean arterial pressure. If you increase cardiac output, uh, mean arterial pressure will increase. If you change, uh, let me say, if you change cardiac output, mean arterial pressure will change. If you change TPR, the cardiac output will, uh, the mean arterial pressure will change. If you, in, if you change both, the mean arterial pressure would change. Okay, so this is what uh, I mean by uh, determinants uh, of the uh, of the thing uh, of any 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 sequence or any process, uh, their determinants mean that if you change those determinants, the value of the main process will change. Okay. Now solving mean arterial pressure here is mean arterial pressure uh, is determined by stroke volume. I'm changing the color. Stroke volume and heart rate. So if you increase increase or decrease the stroke volume or increase or decrease or heart rate, you will affect cardiac output, okay? Now, this is a good recap uh, of uh, these concepts. Cardiac output, you see features here as a determinant mean arterial pressure, indirectly is affected by stroke volume and heart rate. And this is the scheme of things. Now, let's solve this issue. <clears throat> Let's look at the first point. He says heart rate increases. Heart rate is right here. We know this. Heart rate increases with no change in cardiac output or uh, systemic venous, uh, systemic vascular resistance. Now, if the heart rate has increased, it will affect the cardiac, uh, the cardiac output. Okay, because heart rate is right here. How could, how, why didn't it affect the cardiac output? This is not possible. So you cancel this question. You cancel this point. Okay. Um, let's look at C, for example. Arterial compliance changes with no changes, i.e., the compliance has changed. So either there is vasodilation or vasoconstriction. Either the arterial tree is uh, accommodating more blood now as compared to before or less blood. So uh, irrespective, but he, okay, he further says with no changes, no changes in cardiac output or SVR. So there, uh, there have been no change in cardiac output or uh, 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 in this case, no change here, no change here. So how can mean arterial pressure change? Obviously it will not change. Wrong. Heart rate doubles. So now he's talking about heart rate. Heart rate has doubled. Systemic va vascular uh, resistance uh, has halved. This has become one by two. Okay, but uh, with it, it says with no change in stroke volume. But stroke volume has not changed. So whatever increase heart rate has uh, uh, increased uh, has has led to an increase in cardiac output. Uh, the vascular resistance, which was halved, which was decreased basically balanced it out. So cardiac output did increase in this situation because heart rate has increased. Yes, you see the relationships here. So it, it did increase, it got doubled, but this was halved. Again, this will not change. This is, D was quite tricky, so it's wrong, but a good one. Then you have E, arterial compliance doubles, and systemic re uh, vascular resistance is halved with no change in heart rate. Heart, the uh, arterial compliance has doubled so it is accommodating more blood now, uh, but at the same time, resistance has halved, okay? So you have opened up the gateways and there has been no change in heart rate. So no change in heart rate. He does not mention stroke volume. So cardiac output is all right. Uh, the whole game is around total peripheral resistance, but with no change in uh, cardiac output. So while uh, this individually, uh, would have changed mean arterial pressure. So if we were to 
double the uh, uh, compliance of the arterial tree, uh, this would have independently, this would have increased mean arterial pressure, right? Or, or if we were to only half the systemic uh, resistance, vascular resistance, so TPR uh, uh, is the same thing really. So TPR is halved as, as I mentioned here. If this were to be done independently, right here, this would have decreased mean arterial pressure, okay? But, so what you are doing is you are decreasing this, okay? And increasing the mean, uh, the compliance of the, of the arterial tree, which now holds more blood than usual. Uh, so the pressure is increased, okay? But when you put this with this together, they neutralize each other and you have mean arterial pressure is again unchanged. This again is a good one, but it is incorrect in this particular MCQ because it won't change. So only now, the only thing which is uh, left is the correct option, which is B. Uh, I, I beg, uh, let me just add something. Uh, you have done this, this and this with no input from the heart. So the heart is a neutral st standby, but is not involved in option E. The, everything is related to vasculature. So people who, who really understand their circulation would have, would have enjoyed this particular uh, bit. Now, coming to the correct one, stroke volume changes. So the heart puts its, uh, puts, uh, its input, it changes the stroke volume, uh, the heart rate doesn't change, and neither does the uh, systemic vascular resistance. So uh, this here is increased, or, it, or sorry, it's changed, uh, which then changes the cardiac output. This remains the same, but since this has changed, it has increased cardiac output. With this being constant, the net result is increase in mean arterial pressure. Option B is correct. Let's move on to this uh, MCQ. 65% of the student body did not get this right. Uh, I have little idea why this was the case. Although it did require some analysis, probably that was the reason. Uh, let's start from option E and let's go up. Uh, the question is blood flow. So it's about blood flow to organs. So we are talking about local blood flow. Okay, local control of blood flow is controlled. It's primarily, the word is primarily, controlled by sympathetic nervous system rather than local metabolites. So uh, the demarcation is this, this versus sympathetic nervous system versus local metabolites. So th with this in mind, again, please read the question uh, in detail, focus on the question, what is what are they asking? We are talking about blood flow, primarily is the point, blood flow primarily, sympathetic nervous system and local metabolites. So the comparison is between this and this now. Kidney, kidney is not correct because kidney is auto-regulated. We know this, okay? Skeletal muscle during exercise is mainly controlled by like local metabolites and this is not correct either. Uh, we are looking for sympathetic, remember? Brain again is local metabolites. Heart is dual, both uh, sympathetic and local metabolites. Uh, so not primarily controlled by sympathetic, no. Nope. It's mainly uh, uh, by local metabolites, although sympathetic nervous system does play a part. Incorrect, skin indeed is the right answer because in skin, you have sympathetic nervous system as the main controller of its blood flow. A whooping 73% got this wrong, uh, which is not good. It was a beautiful MCQ. Um, it's typical, it checks your overall knowledge of the cardiovascular system and it wasn't very hard. Okay, uh, let's go through it. Uh, we have a mild hemorrhage, compensatory response. You know what happens first, the acute most uh, reflex, uh, mechanism is baroreceptor reflex. It keeps the blood pressure at or close to its normal value. So he's He's assuming that you know baroreceptor reflex, okay? And it's mild hemorrhage, it's not uh, life-threatening, okay? Which of the following values? So now you will start looking at these. Which of the following values is less 
this sir is the key less this is the key this is the main question is less after this is another key point he's talking about after the compensation for hemorrhage uh, was achieved then it was before hemorrhage any uh, when this has done its work which of the values of these five would be less than it was before the hemorrhage okay it's a nice uh, i would say straightforward with a slight twist in it but but it's not not uh, not enough difficult to for a for a class which has a uh let should should i rub in the merit and the position of the college uh, you know what i know what i typically say in the class so uh, assume i've said that and let's move on again we'll start from e to a uh, coronary blood flow would should coronary blood flow be less of course not sympathetic you know that in bare receptor reflex sympathetic nervous system gets turned on right in an hem in a hemorrhage situation if the volume has gone down if the pressure has gone down so bare receptor basically increases the uh, sympathetic nervous system my writing is better than that but this is the tool that i have right now so coronary blood flow will increase sir it will not decrease total peripheral resistance obviously will not be less it will be more because that's the effect of sympathetic nervous system ventricular contractility under sympathetic nervous system will obviously go up not decrease neither will the heart rate it will go up ah now comes the correct choice which is venous compliance venous compliance will go down yes now this is the twist and it's not a very uh, horrible twist it's a very good twist you, we know that sympathetic nervous system squeezes the veins it vasoconstricts there is venoconstriction going on in the veins on the venous side so that you squeeze extra blood which was stored in these reservoir vessels so that it's it becomes available as preload and the heart has more blood to pump so obviously the you when you vasoconstrict something the compliance goes down and he has asked you down right so venous return is the correct answer okay the next one's uh, inaccuracy ratio is 62% Uh, it's heartening to see that uh, a decent amount a number of people got it right it is a hard one uh, patient's history is of chest pain so that's one it's called angina pectoris and it's also happening at rest rest will come in handy uh, in the in the in solving this issue uh, then measurements during such episodes i e during the pain episodes show no change in blood pressure or heart rate again important points to note uh, however there is a decrease in oxygen content of the coronary sinus uh, so the blood which is, is is being received at the coronary sinus the oxygen content is is less than usual so clearly something is wrong here uh, which is going on and now you have been asked to uh from this information you are to conclude which one of these five is the best conclusion or or inference okay um so let's talk take it from the top um can we say that coronary vascular resistance has fell which base which what does it mean resistance uh dropping means there is vasodilation if there is vasodilation uh first why would there be vasodilation when the heart rate is constant vasodilation usually occurs when there are local metabolites vasodilatory metabolites at higher heart rates okay um so that is one thing which uh, does not figure out uh, secondly if uh, if there is vasodilation in the coronaries why then is the oxygen content less than usual so this is obviously wrong number 2 myocardial oxygen consumption must have risen okay uh, this is also uh, not correct is because we know that heart rate is normal okay uh, so uh, if the heart is not doing extra work why is the myocardial oxygen consumption rising so this is also incorrect uh, 
you you do understand that we are investigating why there is a decrease in oxygen content and this could have answered the question and this could have been a uh, the correct answer however with the normalcy of the heart rate uh, it doesn't comply with that okay so this is wrong we go on to number 3 coronary vascular resistance remained constant okay if it remained constant it does not explain the decrease in uh, uh, oxygen content of the coronary okay why was the oxygen less in the coronary sinus okay this is not correct um this however is interesting coronary blood flow must have decreased okay so check this out the dude has chest pain so clearly <clears throat> there is something wrong with the heart there is no change in blood pressure so uh this guy comes into the emergency the first thing is maybe the guy has hypertension again age is not mentioned just to not give you any extra information okay so the first thing goes maybe the overload is increased i e hypertension is there and that is causing the work the workload is increased on the heart and the heart has gone into uh increased contraction profile and and so on and so but this is not the case the blood pressure is fine the heart rate is fine what is the problem then why is this guy getting chest pain why is he uh getting uh, uh, chest pain at rest by the way and why is the oxygen content less Th this point and this at rest chest pain is connected okay could it be that i beg your pardon let me undo this one could it be this is by the way the correct answer could it be that his arteries uh, are being blocked by something not cool like a atherosclerotic plaque yeah if this is the case the resistance in these uh, uh, coronaries would go up i.e. the flow will reduce because of the resistance which has gone up okay and in this case this guy will have problems in the flow of blood through the vessel even at rest he does not need to jog or walk or go up the stairs uh, because the lumen of the coronaries has decreased this decrease in the lumen will 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 decrease the coronary blood flow that ex also explains the decrease co oxygen content of the coronary sinus and this is indeed the correct choice preload increase is wrong we don't have any data uh, from this uh, he is at rest so preload is obviously incorrect this was a good hard mcq i'm very happy either flukes work for you or maybe you you read this well well done okay so we are down to the last three the last three uh, you guys did not do very well uh in these last three we start from the third last uh, 75% of you guys got this one wrong uh again it was not a very hard mcq maybe the topic you did not revise properly so uh the question says adults ventricular septal defect would cause standard question really so a ventricular septal defect means there is a hole in 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 between the in in inside the uh, interventricular septum okay uh, let me just jump on to the correct answer the b, b is the correct answer and let's solve this according to the b right ventricular stroke volume would be larger than left ventricular stroke volume so if this is the heart this side is the left side and this is the right side okay and there is a we have an erasing thing here we have oops the whole thing went now sir we don't have that let me reconstruct the heart uh how do we do that okay so this was our heart let's complete it okay this is the heart now let's say here there is a defect right here okay so the left ventricle is pressure is obviously more than right ventricular pressure but as soon as this ventricular will contract there is a hole in the heart here as well it's not just the aortic uh, aortic uh, valve and uh, ensuing aorta is uh, the the normal exit of the left ventricle this also is an abnormal exit for this ventricle so as soon as it contracts blood will 
jump from left ventricle into the right ventricle like this okay this will be the movement of blood this is abnormal obviously this will lead to uh, the pressures and the volumes of the right side to go up abnormally up okay so this is the correct answer uh, a is not correct uh, because during diastole because of this movement of extra blood inside the right ventricle <clears throat> this is not correct this will be higher okay abnormal low po2 of the left uh, atrial blood it's not correct because there's nothing wrong with the lungs the problem is in the heart an increase in arterial blood pressure no sir it will be decreased because you're losing blood to the right side the cardiac output from the left ventricle will drop a and b is also incorrect we're down to the second last uh, Unbelievable that 88 percent, 12 only 12 percent got this right. 88 percent of the class uh, went down the drain here. Um, again, this is puzzling. All it needed was a bit of a concentration, uh, and maybe I'm speculating here that you guys did not follow my advice of doing MCQs. You read it through from 1 to 50 in 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 this flow, while I've uh, told you again and again. To go through the paper, the first the first reading should be the obvious recall based easy MCQs that you know. Just get them out, mark them, and just get them out of the picture. So psychologically, you know that it's not fifty questions anymore; it's less than fifty. In the second read, you have you you should uh, uh, attempt the slightly more complex ones, uh, not the scenario ones. The scenario ones you leave for the the third read, which will require some of the analysis. However, this uh, this I I would say uh, before you, you testing you, I would have put it in the second read, but looking at the result, it looks like it is a quote unquote scenario uh, in its own, although it shouldn't be the case. So we are talking about central venous pressure is increased. So we have now committed that we are looking at CVP going up. Okay, now. What, we, what what do we have? We have the uh, option A, increased total peripheral resistance. Now guys, if you have uh, TPR, which is increasing, you will have increased in blood pressure, okay? Uh, it, it directly does not have an effect on uh, central venous pressure. And we are talking, whenever we talk, look, everything is related to everything, okay? But we are talking about immediately, the immediate precursor. So total peripheral resistance, immediate precursor is the heart itself. It's the, it's the cardiac output. It's, uh, it's, in fact, it's the blood pressure. Okay, the central uh, total TPR is a component of measuring the arterial blood pressure. If it goes up, blood pressure goes up. All right. So this is, uh, this is wrong on that, uh, on that count. Increasing venous, venous compliance. If you increase venous compliance, what do we mean? What we are saying is we are vasodilating the, the, the veins. What will happen? Blood will pool in the veins. Yes, if blood pools in the veins, it does not go up into the right, uh, the right atrium where we are measuring the central venous pressure, right? So if you are pooling the blood in the veins, the, the, the amount of blood which is entering into the right atrium and making your central venous pressure will drop. So this is also incorrect. Uh, decreasing heart rate. Now, this is interesting. If the heart has slowed down, it's not clearing out the blood that is coming in at the normal rate that it should, then there is pooling of the blood inside the heart. And obviously, heart includes the right chamber as well. So if there is pooling of the blood on the right side, CVP goes up. Bingo. This is the answer. This is the correct answer. And we uh, we'll, we'll finish it off by uh, looking at why these are incorrect. Decreasing plasma aldosterone. What does aldosterone do? You need to know this, right? Aldoster this is why MCQs are tricky, but John, because you have to know each and everything in these. So if you did not revise your aldosterone, then you will be confused between this and this. Okay. Now, decrease uh, aldosterone. What does it do? It retains salt and water. For first years, this is enough. When it retains salt and water, it increases the ECF volume, okay, which then 
increases blood pressure okay this is uh, let me just get this right okay so decreasing it will just will just reverse this it will decrease this it will decrease blood pressure everything goes down you don't have enough volume and this is crucial when you have less volume central venous pressure will also decrease not increase so this is wrong decreasing volume is obviously wrong you just talked about it okay so this is why this was wrong what is not evident is why most of you got it wrong okay just an addendum to this question uh, most of you I've, I've just looked this up most of you answered this this by the way was the correct answer but most of you answered this this again I, as i addressed but i think i was uh, very quick in uh, that explanation this eventually will affect uh, uh, central venous pressure that's right however in such mcqs and for that matter in any concept if somebody asks you you talk about the immediate boss okay what what do i mean by this what i mean by this is tpr where, where does it fit in it, it fits in many places but in, in, in terms of circulation it fits in with cardiac output together with uh, let's see if i have space here bp blood pressure arterial blood pressure okay this is where it fits in okay this is your tpr so increasing tpr <clears throat> yes will increase blood pressure yes this will increase the afterload component after load component and yes this will put pressure on the heart yes and eventually when the heart fails or is failing yes then it will cause an increase in cvp but see we traveled the whole of the country here didn't we <laughs> uh, we just asked about tpr here so the immediate boss is arterial blood pressure and this concept by the way this way of solving you should adopt whenever in circulation and heart and cardiovascular system there are a lot of stations there are a lot of individual standalone concepts whenever somebody picks on a single concept so we picked on this one thing okay now the the, the, the these mcqs are hard to make and harder to solve i would i would admit because central venous pressure is controlled by so many things from the from the from the venous side of things from heart itself and from the arterial side of things okay so so granted these are the uh, the, the the challenges of making such uh, questions and, and answering such questions but remember to solve uh, these questions by this technique that you look for the immediate boss TPR, whenever you are given TPR, look for options which talk about blood pressure. If it's a distant relative, look further up. Look for immediate boss for central venous pressure. In this case, this was the immediate boss. Thought I would just explain this. Thank you. So we come to the last question. Again, 84% answered this incorrectly. Uh, the question is a drop in arterial blood pressure produced by arteriolar vasodilation. So arterioles have gone into vasodilation. Obviously the blood pressure would drop. Immediately you should just, for practice sake, write down mean arterial pressure is equal to, what is it, what is it equal, equal to? Cardiac output, okay. Multiplied by total peripheral resistance, okay. So what we have done is we have decreased this. We have decreased the total peripheral resistance. Cardiac output, we have no information about this. So we assume that this is constant. This will lead to a drop in mean arterial blood pressure. Okay. So with this in mind, let's solve it from E upwards. Uh, e says that it will lead to vasodilation of the systemic capillaries. So uh, decreasing the arterial blood pressure by increasing arterial dilatation uh, will have an effect in systemic capillaries in the sense that there will be uh, increase in pressure inside these capillaries because of the blood running off uh, through the dilated arterioles however there is no active vasodilation in the systemic capillaries going on okay so this is an incorrect option uh, option number d uh, 
uh, states that a decrease in amplitude of the arterial pulse pressure okay incidentally this is the uh, this is the most favored response of the class most of you ticked this <clears throat> uh, this is not correct why is it why is it not correct we know that pulse pressure is determined by determined from uh, systolic pressure i have to get this right uh, the writing minus diastolic pressure okay diastolic pressure okay now the systolic pressure is determined mainly by stroke volume you know this okay and the diastolic is mainly determined by tpr hmm? so what you have done is this is constant you have there is no information about heart there is no sort uh, issue with the heart okay so you assume that the heart is fine the, the stroke volume is fine however when you have dilated the arterioles you have decreased tpr okay so this difference will come out to be exaggerated because systolic pressure will remain the same however you have dropped the diastolic pressure because you have dropped the tpr if you don't understand it please you are referred to my relevant uh, video which explains these concepts regarding pulse pressure so the amplitude will actually increase this is incorrect uh, then you have an increase in arterial volume no the arterial volume will increase as it, this is this says um, I, I beg your pardon it will decrease because uh, what will happen is you have vasodilated the arterioles the blood will run out of the uh, arterial side of the circulation quicker so there will be a drop in arterial volume not an increase no change no sir there will be a change it will decrease and then we come to the final point which has to be correct uh, the, there is an increase in venous volume why because you have opened up the gates of the arterioles uh, blood is moving out of the arterioles quicker and more in volume through the capillaries and onto the venous side okay so the venous side of circulation will increase in, in its volume and this is the correct answer assalamu alaikum this is feedback on few of the mcqs of first year standard exam in a marathon runner performance in a marathon race is limited by a number of factors the factor considered to be critical for high level performance is muscle atp content adequate fat stores high muscle glycogen content high muscle oxidative capacity high percentage of type 2 muscle fibers the correct answer is high muscle oxidative capacity because more than 95 percent of energy used by the muscles for long-term contraction like a marathon race is derived from oxidative metabolism the first option in which muscle ATP content is incorrect because the, the concentration of ATP in the muscle is only sufficient to maintain contraction for one to two seconds only. The second option is also incorrect because for a prolonged contraction for about two to four hours, half of the energy is derived from stored carbohydrates. So adequate fat stores is not essential factor or important factor for maintenance of high level of performance. Option C, in which high muscle glycogen content is also incorrect. Why? Because glycolysis usually loses its ability to maintain maximum muscle contraction after one minute. Why? Because there is accumulation of end products after glycolysis. And the last option, E option, is also incorrect because type 2 muscle fibers, they have less number of mitochondria and therefore oxidative metabolism is of secondary importance in this type of muscle. The second MCQ, if the person lifts weights routinely, the muscles involved in the lifting, they undergo hypertrophy and become capable of generation force. The best explanation for these adaptations is increased length of muscle fiber, increased maximal velocity of contraction, increased number of fast twitch 
fibers in the muscle, increased number of sarcomeres arranged in parallel, greater activity of the myosin ATPase. The correct answer is D. Why? Because when the person lifts weights routinely, that means that the muscle regularly contract while it is loaded because of the weight lifting and that leads to hypertrophy. In hypertrophy, there is increased synthesis of both myosin and actin. Additionally, the, some myofibrils, they split to form new myofibrils. So the correct answer is there is increased number of sarcomeres arranged in parallel. Next MCQ, which cells are activated by antigen fragments complex with MHC1 proteins? CD8 T cells are the cells which are activated by antigen complexed with MHC1 proteins. MHC1 is specific to cytotoxic T cells. MHC2 is specific to helper T cells, whereas B cells, they recognize intact antigens. So they don't need MH, uh, uh, they don't need MHC1 or MHC2. In patients having vitamin K deficiency, there are chances of deficiency of factor 12, prolonged bleeding time, prolonged clotting time, deficiency of factor 6, or deficiency of factor 13. Vitamin K is essential for synthesis of clotting factors which are synthesized in the liver. And deficiency of vitamin K leads to deficiency of these factors, clotting factors, which are synthesized in the liver, and therefore leads to prolonged clotting time. Bleeding time is specially prolonged when there is thrombocytopenia. Uh, 